So we're looking at baseline. We want to look at the top line, obviously, on our fetal heart rate. And let's just draw one out here. And let's say, you know, normal is less than 160, more than 110. So for the sake of this drawing, we'll just say that um, this is a normal tracing. And our line is here, right? Our baseline, we'll say if this is 50, this is going to be about 135 here. Our baseline is simply the most straight line across the tracing. Okay, so if we just look at the tracing and get a straight line, our baseline in this tracing is going to be somewhere around 120. Okay, and you're going to see um, you're going to see numbers on your strip, so you don't have to guess like I'm doing here, but you're going to see numbers um, graduated completely on your strip, so you can look at the baseline, okay, and just sort of see, um, you know, if you were looking, say, two or three feet away, what does this strip look like? How, what is an average of the baby's baseline? And that's what we're looking at, baseline. Um, Let's talk a little bit more about baseline and what is normal and what can cause variations and, and real changes in the baseline that we tend to call accelerations and decelerations. Remember we said that a normal baseline was between 110 and 160, right? And there are um, obviously terms below 110 we call fetal bradycardia. And above 160 we call fetal tachycardia. Right, and there are um, specific things that cause each of these. So we'll say Brady is here, Tacky is here, and this is 160 plus, and this is less than 110. Okay, so fetal bradycardia is caused by head compression, cord compression. It is called by caused by fetal hypoxia, and sometimes this is referred to as utero placental insufficiency. But you know, I tend to like fetal hypoxia a little better, so we'll go with that. Fetal bradycardia is also caused by drugs, and it is caused by fetal heart blocks. You know, so babies can have congenital heart blocks too. Don't forget that. Okay, so let's change colors here so this will be a little easier to read anyway. Fetal tachycardia uh, is caused by maternal fever. It's actually an early sign of maternal fever and maternal infection. Okay, and maternal fever then is an early sign of amnionitis. Right. So if you see a baby that's starting to get tacky um, and maternal temperatures aren't being taken, usually they are on the wards, it's a good idea to, to take maternal temperatures um, and, and catch amnionitis early if it's starting to occur. So tachycardia is a sign of maternal fever and amnionitis. Um, it is also a sign of fetal hypoxia, just like it is bradycardia. It is a sign, um, fetal tachycardia can be caused by drugs, and it can be caused by um, tachyarrhythmias. I'll save that one. So like SVT, again, a congenital SVT, congenital um, conduction abnormality that baby can have, and it can be caused by thyrotoxicosis. Um, and most of the time we're talking about maternal thyrotoxicosis here. Uh, so those are the things that can cause fetal bradycardia, fetal tachycardia, um, and it, it's important to keep those things in mind um, because ultimately when we see either fetal tachycardia or fetal bradycardia, we're going to be trying to address one of these underlying issues. Okay. So now that we've talked about our B, our baseline, um, in the next lecture we'll the next part in this series will move forward to variability.